Justin Bond, I'm the Head of Fleet Operations for South East Coast Ambulance Service in the UK. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce you to our IPTS vehicle, our connected smart ambulance um, that we've been uh, working with Ferno and local bodybuilders uh, to, to provide. Um, it'd be a pleasure to show you a call. And service. Uh, we've not got a tail lift on the back of this vehicle. Um, we've worked in partnership with Ferno and utilised some of their fantastic products to um, really enhance uh, the patient experience and um, to take away some of the uh, unnecessary inefficiencies that we find uh, with the traditional conventional approaches to loading patients. So we've taken about a quarter of a tonne uh, off the back of the vehicle. That's going to translate into fuel savings. That's going to translate into maintenance uh, reductions. In terms of task time, we're going to see a, about a minute shaved off the loading scenario for each transport. And in an organisation that produces about 4,000 unit hours of ambulance time a day, you know that's going to be a phenomenal saving for us. Um, obviously, you don't incur the, the, the downtime that's associated with maintaining those ancillary pieces of equipment. And you also don't have to go through the regulatory um, requirements that being certificated and testing uh, those regimes also brings into the mix. All of that equates to you know, a very smart approach to uh, taking out waste from the system and for us not to be um, uh, impacting on the availability time of an ambulance that should be out. Uh, rendering aid to patients. The other main uh, kind of scenario and vision for this vehicle is that um, we wanted uh, a completely connected environment. We wanted to release efficiency through technology. Uh, we wanted to enable the clinician to be far better connected to other healthcare providers um, and also better connected to clinical supervisors um, and enable the managers to be able to uh, contact our staff um, in a variety of ways so that whatever the scenario they were able to provide some support and some guidance um, and do that from within the confines of the vehicle. There's obviously a lot of interest around the NX um, and its capabilities and we're not necessarily going to be focusing too much on the variety of options um, and the uh, scenarios that you can use the NX. YouTube's there you can have a look at those, but um, the fact that we've got a stable, safe patient environment, one that accommodates the equipment uh, to fulfill the needs of the paramedic, um, to fulfill the needs of the patient, to enable a really safe transfer and transportation of both the equipment and the patient um, in synergy with each other, uh, you know, just takes that whole um, care package to another level. As you can see on this vehicle, we've got the pack rack, which is a crash tested uh, environment uh, that allows us to attach a number of ancillary pieces of equipment within the proximity of the patient. That means that, you know, we don't run the risk of potentially having a, a, an incident in the vehicle where the equipment might strike the patient or hit other occupants. Um, that's been something that's been lacking in the UK ambulance sector for quite a while. We've done far too many things to try and get around that. The working practice of the paramedic under pressure will often mean that they were putting stuff down on the floor and not necessarily uh, securing that kind, of that kind of technology and that equipment in a safe and uh, secure manner. The design feature of this vehicle is that we've got uh, multiple positions for the cot. Um, the cot as it is in the, at the moment is in its uh, normal uh, position. If we end up with bariatric patients, um, we've got the ability to move the cot to the centre uh, line of the vehicle but also to charge and uh, be completely um, stable uh, in a crash worthy environment. Um, we've got a medic seat that we can also orientate according to the head end of the, the patient. Um, allows us to maintain uh, you know good airway posture and position um, whilst maintaining safety throughout. We've got a really good quality intercom system but there's nothing that really replaces the uh, the benefit of being able to talk through an open door um, in a safe and reliable manner. Um, so uh, we put in this bulkhead door really to benefit the communication between the front and the back and really to maintain the communication uh, when it's most important and when it's critical uh, when the patient's been treated. Taken out a lot of cupboards, uh, again traditionally within the UK you tend to find that we've got a cupboard for all sorts of boxes and, and bells and whistles and 
having the flexibility of using in tracks has meant that not only can we can configure the vehicle to match the skill set of the staff, but also the role and the function that the vehicle needs to undertake. So you may well find that, you know, on day one or month one, it's going to be a critical care paramedic. Um, and then you might want to then say, well, do you know what? We need more transport hours. So we're going to turn it into a non-emergency transport vehicle, or maybe we're going to turn it into a, an ALS or a BLS truck. Um, and really enable the flexibility for the environment to suit the clinician and the needs of the patient. The other great advantage of this system is that once your medical director starts uh, making decisions that says, you know what, we're going to swap from this piece of equipment or this piece of equipment to something else, rather than going through a remedial plan that's going to take three to six months of reworking, uh, downtime, um, and obviously a lot of uh, labour cost, we can then turn around relatively quickly with the system, we can unplug what we've got and we can replace it with something else. Infection control uh, environments to to really limit the risk to the patient, you know, um, picking up health acquired um, infections is a, is a big deal and um, you know we've got a role to play in the ambulance service to ensure that we're not uh, impacting on patients unnecessarily um, and introducing them to the opportunity to pick up an infection. With that said, one of the, uh, the, the developments for this vehicle is that we've taken away blinds. Traditionally, we would have uh, uh, integrated blinds within, to, within the window panel. Um, our crews report that they, um, they get dirty, they get broken. Obviously, uh, fixing those means that uh, the vehicle again is off the road. But from a patient care perspective, the feedback that we get from patients is that this sort of um, artificial horizon uh, creates a, a nausea um, in some patients and uh, being able to um, turn on a switch, blank out for privacy and dignity um, what's going on in the back of the vehicle and then potentially to um, uncharge the, uh, the window and uh, make that uh, transparent again is a, is a great opportunity and hopefully it's something that's really going to be uh, popular with our staff. The key advantages that we're anticipating with this vehicle, um, apart from the flexibility of design and the ability to configure it to match the skills of the staff, um, is the fact that obviously we're not overloading vehicles with uh, components and, and uh, medical consumables, um, which reduces risk, but actually there's also a great opportunity there to refine our costs and make sure that we've got a vehicle that's really task worthy for the role and function that it deserves. Um, we anticipate that we will see a speeding up through our make ready system, probably of about 10 minutes. Um, and in our system, uh, a 10 minute efficiency equates to about 1.7 million pounds worth of savings, uh, which is crucial. You know, we need to be really sharp about taking out the waste from the system um, and seeing how we can then uh, turn those savings into cashable benefits and then reinvest that into other projects like this and back into patient care. On this vehicle, you'll also see that we've got uh, PIR and motion sensors. Um, we use that to control a lot of the aspects of the vehicle, particularly the lighting. Um, it's part and parcel of the uh, strategy for managing power within the vehicle. Um, we want to automate what we can, but we don't want to be too reliant upon you know, switch panels and uh, guys fumbling around with you know, dirty gloves um, when they should be focusing on the patient. So um, we've set this up through the ACETEC system ultimately to control the lighting within the vehicle but also to, so it's configured so that it turns off automatically as part and parcel of the, the power management strategy within this uh, within this truck. So another innovation that we've managed to cram into this uh, already innovation full truck is uh, we've got uh, Alexa on board which is sort of the Amazon version of Siri. It gives an element of voice control, um, gives us the ability to be able to say lights on, lights off, uh, change the temperature, change the environment, maybe inquire about certain protocols in certain situations. Um, really providing the operational and clinical staff with um, a how-to if they need to, uh, just to give them some confidence about a job that maybe they haven't done for a while. Um, and an, a grand opportunity for them to be able to say, I just need to check my, my protocols, make sure I'm on the right side of my guidance, am I operating safely and am I operating in the best interest of my patients. We've also managed to put some high fidelity CCTV uh, camera options on this vehicle. So 
we've got some in the saloon, as you can see. Um, we also put CCTV around the vehicle. Um, that allows us to protect our staff and support our staff, as well as making sure that uh, obviously our patients are safeguarded. Um, this CCTV system uh, bounces through our Wi-Fi on board. Um, that means that we can back up the CCTV images through to uh, the cloud and uh, when we get into you know traffic violations we get into instance roadside um, we're able to download that data pretty quickly um, it gives us the ability to talk with law enforcement and local police authorities about um, the initial causes and the things that the uh, crew were experiencing before they were involved in a particular incident we also know that in the UK um, and in this trust in particular we get about 32% of our um, assaults happen in or around the vehicle and being able to protect our staff and support our staff through the legal process um, has been invaluable, uh, particularly if you've got high fidelity images to support that, uh, that, that challenge. Um, smart temperature control drives a number of functions within this vehicle. The first and most important function is that it allows us to track the calling efficacy and the maintenance of uh, calling uh, within the drugs compartment. Uh, it has a positive effect on the half-life of efficacy of the drug and it's uh, audited so that we're able to um, prove beyond a reasonable doubt exactly that the, vehicle, the uh, drugs were uh, contained in a safe and effective manner um, for optimum uh, effect when uh, they get to uh, the patient. The other aspect of uh, smart temperature control is that uh, it's linked to the ACETEC system it's uh, part and parcel of equal eco run and we can configure uh, some of the environments and the, the situations and conditions on the back of the vehicle um, temperature being one lighting being another uh, and, and battery condition so that we can start shedding the load um, that's on the vehicle uh, we can manage the battery state uh, in terms of uh, perseverance of uh, the, the main starter battery but when some of those conditions and those environmental uh, aspects start going out of kilter mm -hmm. then the vehicle starts itself back up again um, to protect the integrity of the environment that we've already predetermined. Uh, solar panels fitted to this vehicle um, they're marine grade um, self-healing panels so you know in terms of damage and, and what have you uh, they still become uh, very very efficient and effective. Um, they're linked directly to the ACETEC system so we know um, the amount of charge that we're getting through those panels and the amount of support that the batteries are actually receiving. Um, we've had no downtime since we've had this vehicle connected up uh, with those solar panels um, associated with uh, battery problems. We've been able to monitor over time the efficacy of those solar panels even within a garage uh, picking up ambient lighting. Uh, we haven't seen any of the battery charge levels drop. Some of the other technology that we're seeing on this vehicle um, really is a first for us again uh, the, the opportunity to connect our assets to the vehicle and then to alert the staff of the fact that some of those key important assets the assets that are uh, low volume but high value critical assets in terms of the mission are absent or missing you'll never get into the opportunity again or the situation again where we'll find that a crew leaves a scene um, where maybe they've attended and it's been particularly complicated um, and they drive away not recognising the fact that they've left their cardiac monitor behind. As part and parcel of the ASTEC system we also have AVA, it's a voice alert. One of the uh, elements that we found was really distracting staff uh, in their normal work was that we had bells and pings and chirps telling them that something was out of alignment um, and they got to a point there were so many of those that they were distra being distracted and they didn't really know what the chirp or the ping was necessarily telling them. Uh, so we've gone to very simple uh, instructions that, uh, and information packages that tell them that the door's open, that maybe they're travelling too fast. Illustration of some of the tech that we've got on this vehicle, and as I've already mentioned, we're, uh, we've, we've got Alexa on board. Uh, we've got the ability for Bluetooth, near-field technologies, um, and Wi-Fi, uh, obviously for the benefit of the crew, um, being able to do their normal mandated um, you know, emails and e-learning and that kind of stuff. But when they're on some downtime, this will give them a reliable, um, a reliable source and hotspot for them to, you know, download something off the internet, maybe stream some movies, 
um, and really give them the opportunity to decompress after you know some of those nasty jobs that they uh, unfortunately have to go to. This vehicle really is the epitome of the vision of the trust um, and really is uh, the building block for the changes that we're seeing within the NHS. Uh, better connectivity to uh, enable better care for our patients and the opportunity for working much more collaboratively with other healthcare providers and emergency services um, to really benefit the whole health economy and uh, improve patient outcome.